few weeks ago, I started a series on what it means to be a trend-following moron. And a lot of these are the same thing as what it means to be a trend follower and the ups and downs that you will have to deal with as a trend follower. Now, as we talked about last week, the only way to ever make money trading is to capture a trend. So my feeling is, why do I be a trend follower all the time? But anyway, the TFM will be bullish at the top and bearish at the bottom. We're not trying to outsmart the markets, as I've said quite often. And if you go back and look at the service 4412, which was published on 411, you can see that the NASDAQ made a new closing high. And I was pretty excited about that. And vis-a-vis -vis the new closing high, I said, one of my favorite patterns as far as supporting my bullish case, or bullish cases, I should say, is the new closing high. And I'm not going to argue with brand new closing highs. So on 411, when the market was at a brand new high, which could possibly be a top, let's hope it's not, but you know, you gotta be careful when you hope in the market. <laughs> so, but anyway, I was pretty bullish on that day because I thought we had this stealthy closing high, which looks like the, was kind of a look like the market could blast higher. When you have an obvious market breaking out to do highs, everybody and their brother kind of piles in and then it, it kind of it doesn't last long often and there's a fake out and things like that. But when you have these stealthy closing highs, sometimes you can get a nice trend continuation. So anyway, I was bullish at the market high. And you can get these archives at daylearner.com slash archives to see warts and all uh, how I handle markets, good, bad, and indifferent. Now, the TFM knows that he will be wrong when the trend ends. As I often say, all trades eventually end badly. We're still long this one. And we've been right for a long, 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 long time. But if this thing goes down and stops out, obviously, in the end, we're going to be wrong. And a corollary to that is as a trend follower, or as a trend following moron, you're going to spend a lot of your time less wealthy, either waiting for trends to resume or you're waiting for the occasional outlier. So the money as a trend follower tends to come in chunks. It's like you chip away, chip away, chip away, win a little, lose a little, win a lose, little, lose a little, and then bam, you knock it out the park. And you catch a few of these elusive outliers. But anyway, so at the peak here a few days ago on the remaining position on 100, on a hypothetical 100K account, okay, we already took $1,000 off of this position, okay? So that number would be 6,791 total. But as far as open profits, at least at the peak at 84 was worth, the position was worth 5,791. Now, God forbid we stop out way down here, we'll stop out for a gain of only 3,291. Now, it's better than the poke in the eye, but that's a couple thousand dollars you're giving up plus, okay? And it's going to hurt. And But that's, that's what trend following is all about. And that's why we take partial profits back here. So we have a little bit smaller position on, and we can ride out these zigs and zags hopefully and stay with the trend for a long long time now we don't know when the trend's going to end it sure looked like it was ending here but we didn't get stopped out it looked a little ugly here but we didn't get stopped out and once again it's looking a little ugly and now the market's looking a little ugly too so that's of some concern now getting back to the the zones charts this was my just for SGs trade, I bought the Qs, and this number was up in the 12s a couple of weeks ago when I did the last year daily five. And at the peak, the profits were 12,985. And if it gets stopped out, it's going to be a big ouch of 6,872. Now, in this particular case, if this was only 100 shares, but it begins to add up, obviously. But I didn't have, I don't have any money management in here, so I'm not taking profits. I'm just going to follow the system mechanically to see how it shakes out. And believe me, that's that's pretty painful. I never dreamed that this market would run 25% or whatever that was over such a short period of time, and that this little smallish type of position—I mean, it's still 30k—but smallish type of position 
would soon be worth 40 something thousand dollars. So I will give up a big chunk and, you know, better love and loss than to never loved at all, right? Here's one thing about system design. When you are designing the system, it's a lot of fun. I don't know, again, you want to party with me, but, and you're thinking like, oh yeah, I just got in here and I wrote this trend. But, but what you don't realize is when you're actually following a system, and again, I don't follow systems mechanically, except for this one, just for S and Gs. But when you actually are following a system, it's a lot harder. The map is not the territory. So you might look at these little blips in the system like, oh, it's getting ugly. Oh, it came right back. You know, and you're like, oh, look at that. You know, $40,000 for this trade. Well, what you're not seeing is $13,000 evaporates down to less than $7,000. And that's kind of an ugly thing to, to live through. Now, the trend following moron does not seek bargains. He actually pays up for his position and buys on strength. Kind of an interesting story, and I don't know if I heard this straight from him or not, or, or if it was in trading uh, sardines, but uh, futures broker Damon was talking about a famous trader bought like 400 S&P contracts, and he got his price, and then he immediately flipped them out, and he's like, well, why are you selling them already? You got your price. He says, he says I got them too easy. Uh, so he he basically knew it was it was too easy. He would have much rather have paid up for the price. And some, some of my worst fills turn into my best trades. But anyway, this is tr from trading full circle. If you're going to enter a stock, you're not going to try to catch the falling knife, so to speak. You're going to enter on strength. So you're going to be buying at a higher level. The risk, of course, is that you're buying at the top and then it rolls over. But it's a chance that you have to take. As I've said 10,000 times, I am shocked at how many losing trades could have been avoided by simply waiting for entries and how many losing trades we do avoid simply by waiting for an entry. The TFM knows that you can only predict so far, okay? It's like predicting the weather. I can look outside and see if it's cloudy and thundering. I know it's gonna rain fairly soon or possibly red sky in the morn, you know, I need to take warn. That's an old sailor's adage. I think it's in the Bible too. And there's some merit to that, but if it looks like it's going to rain, it's probably going to rain. But I don't know if it's going to be raining the day, the day after or next week or next year. And with trend following, you can really only see so far out, okay? So that's why I'm, I'm slotted as a swing trader, but I will stick with positions as long as they move in my favor. Now, I'm kind of anti-reversion to the mean trading. If you know me for a while, I'm a little bit against that type of trading. And in fact, I get more former reversion to the mean type of traders who come to me to cross over to the dark side of being a trend following moron than all the other methodologies combined. But anyway, I got into a kind of a heated debate with someone once who called me a reversion to the mean trader. And I thought those were fighting words and come to find out maybe I am a reversion to the mean trader. I'm a reversion to the mean trader, as he explains, within the established trend. Yes, so I trade pullbacks. I'm waiting for that market to become oversold, provided it has a fantastic trend. And then I'm looking to enter as it begins to rally, as I just showed. Now, this move is fairly certain, and, and lately it hasn't been that certain. So fairly is a, I use that term a little loosely, but the chances of this happening or a lot better than the resumption of the longer term trend. Provided you're picking your markets really well, you only have about a 20% chance, if that much, of capturing a longer term trend. I learned that through years and years and years of mechanical system testing. However, your odds are much better of catching that swing trade. And if that works out, you take your partial profits, just like I showed in those crypto trades earlier, and then you stick around as long as you can hang on. You don't throw caution to the wind. You use a fairly liberal stop, but when the music stops, you have a chair ready and you get out. Anyway, I'm kind of beating this example to death, kind of a dead horse example, beating this dead horse to death, if that makes sense. But again, we took a swing trade profit out back here, and so far we're riding it out to see how long we can stick with it.